Hey, what's going on, everybody? Special guest today is JJ Perez, covers UTSA for Inside Runner Sports and the 24-7 Sports Network. We're going to talk about Miami New defensive end coach Rod Wright. What's going on, JJ? Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, definitely want to get some insight on this guy. You know, I know he's a former Dolphins player, played in the NFL. He's coached some different spots, Texas, Sam Houston State, East Carolina. And then he goes to UTSA and best season ever for the program last year. He was there for three years. Um, just initially, JJ, what stands out to you about him as a coach? So obviously he won the national championship with the Texas Longhorns in 2005. So he, he knows what it takes to be a big time division one football player. And, you know, he was an all American at Texas and, you know, that, that type of connection that he has with players helps him both on the recruiting trail and in developing some of the guys, because he knows what it takes. A lot of times you have these position coaches that have been, you know, for lack of a better word, recycled in the business where they've gone from job to job because of the connections they know. That's not the situation with Rod Wright. He's a young and upcoming coach. And, you know, he's had quite the ascent from, I think he was at East Carolina to Sam Houston State to UTSA and now Miami, all in a relatively short period of time. So he's an up, a young and up-and-coming coach, I, I would describe him that way. So again, uh, co-defensive coordinator last year, coached the defensive line. Let's talk about last season, uh, particularly on the defensive line. What kind of line did they have? What were its strengths? You know, essentially, how did they play under Coach Wright? So Coach Wright used a, I want to, it was a 3-4 base defense. So, you know, he was mainly responsible for coaching, I guess, the interior D-line and then the edge linebacker, outside linebacker. So they were very multiple at times. So, um as co-defensive coordinator last season, he didn't call the plays, but he was I instrumental in developing game plans for the entire defense. So, I mean, I think he was also titled run game coordinator. Um, and they, they were really good at stopping the run. And, well, you know, one of the things that, you know, he's developed some of the, the, the edge pass rushers that UTSA has had. And you look at what UTSA did last year, and there aren't a lot of guys that had huge stats that are going to jump out at you because what they did is they, you know, they rotated guys. They, they use up sometimes three deep guys to keep guys fresh. And that really came into, you know, it really helped down the stretch of the season, you know, injuries, depth. And then at the end of games, those guys were fresh. So um, it, I, he's going to do what the personnel has at Miami. Um, but, you, you know, just multiple a very heady coach, um, and he's going to do kind of like where the players fit, and he's going to put them in the best position, I think. Yeah, the the run defense, you know, stands out to me. I thought it was impressive. Not only did the program, you know, kind of go through some transition the last three years, four and eight, seven and five, then the big 12 and two season, but run defense. They go from 13th in the Conference USA to sixth to second last year, 14th nationally. Where did you see the biggest strides with run defense whether it was a defensive line, um, you know, stepping up its game, you know, how did they improve? What was the point of emphasis? How did they get to that level of having a, a top 15 run defense in the country? Yeah. And I think if you look at coach Wright's bio, there's a few guys um, that are mentioned specifically Jalen Haynes and Brandon Brown. Those are all, all conference type of guys that were in the center of the defensive line. And those guys didn't, I, they don't have a lot of stats because a lot of the time, when those guys are doing their jobs, they're getting double teamed and they're, they're taking up space. But what they did is they clogged the middle. And it also had a lot to do with the play of the, the inside linebacker group, too. So they were real solid in the center of the D-line. And that helped some of the guys on the end, you know, come up with some of those big sack numbers. UTSA had a uh, record-setting, like, edge rusher, uh, hybrid linebacker, and, you know, Clarence Hicks last season. And you know, he, he might have won Defensive Player of the Year last year in the conference had, you know, the guy from Western Kentucky not had one more sack. So, uh, you know, just a total team effort there on, along that defensive line and a huge a huge credit to, to Rod Wright. And it certainly is a big loss for UTSA. Yeah, and certainly you're touching on some, some standout players. That's another thing that stands out to me. He's coached guys that have gotten to the NFL while he was at ECU. 
Coach Nate Harvey, a guy that became the, the conference defensive player of the year. P.J. Hall, while at Sam Houston State, became an All-American. We touched on the guys there at UTSA and, and certainly impressive players. J.J., are there is there a point of emphasis for Coach, um, either listening to him talk of like, this is what has to be done for defensive linemen to play for him, you know, points of emphasis, something he really preaches to his guys? You know, I can't speak to the – technicality of the defensive line because each position is kind of different the the different techniques or, or whatnot and you know he's pretty versatile and in, in, in knowing how to teach that but one thing I would say I would pick up specifically with coach Wright is that his intensity and passion both in practices during pregame during the game I mean he is going to get the most out of his players just because of the fire he brings. And, you know, he's a pretty emotional guy. I mean, you, you'll see him in pregame warm-ups, hyping up the guys. And a, a lot of times, I mean, that's where these games are won in the trenches. And, you know, the defensive line versus off offensive line, you know, matchup are, are huge. So, I mean, I, I'd say that was probably one of the biggest standouts that I've noticed from him is his intensity and fire. Uh, it's not surprising you say that. Uh, Mario Cristobal, known for his intensity and his passion for the game. The other coaches they've hired at Miami under him, we, we are hearing this a lot. Um, so hearing this from, about Coach Wright's not surprising. Do you have an – I know you touched on examples of, you know, where you've seen it, but is there a specific moment that stands out to you with the intensity, either pregame? Is there a, is there a moment that, as you're explaining it, like this is what stands out to me in my head about uh, Coach Wright? So, so one of the biggest games last season that UTSA played was on the road at Memphis, and they were actually down at halftime. And I remember going down to the concourse, and I, I, obviously in pregame he was he was hyped up. He, I mean, getting the defensive line um, situated in pregame, he always always brings that fire. But I remember specifically, and I, I think UTSA was down. Uh, either 14 or 20 points at the end. He was just firing up these guys to, to make, to make it happen. And that, to me, that, that was kind of the standout moment for him in the season that, you know, they shut down Memphis in that second half and UTSA was able to mount a comeback. And that was probably the biggest, one of the biggest wins of the season. And, and a lot of credit goes to, you know, coach Wright and, and, and the defensive line there. Yeah, that's impressive you say that again. Uh, and yeah, you're correct. Down 21-7 at halftime, go on to win 31-28, outscored Memphis 17-0 in the fourth quarter. And it happened at the beginning of the year and just kind of rolled throughout the, the season, the win, win the Conference USA, you know, the championship game there, um, lose the bowl game uh, to San Diego State, but just a, just a really good season. You touched on recruiting at the very beginning of this, and, and I'm wondering what kind of insight you can provide. This is a guy, like you said, played at Texas. He's from there. Um, a lot of coaching ties to Texas as a state. And I know, you know, just Coach Cristobal, his belief in, in kind of getting back Miami into Texas more like it used to be. And I'm, I'm sure that's something he's looking at doing in the recruiting ranks here. Coach Wright, as a recruiter, what stands out to you about him on, on that level? And he is a tireless recruiter. I mean, nobody is going to outwork him. That's, that's one of the things that led him to get promoted last year from, you know, a D-line coach to also co-defensive coordinator because of his one work ethic and just his knowledge of Texas. And he's from Houston originally. So that's a huge, huge recruiting base for the state. And, you know, the connections he had with Sam Houston State, which, is, which isn't too far from Houston. I mean, he knows almost everyone in that corner of Texas. So that's where he's been recruiting UTSA. Um, he was actually a holdover from Frank Wilson's staff, the, the previous head coach several years ago. And the reason why they decided to keep him was because he recruited the Houston area so well. And I mean, that's going to pay huge dividends for Miami to be able to get back into Texas just because of his knowledge of the area and how well known and respected he is in the state. One of those schools that stands out to me just off the top there, North Shore out of Houston, Miami's linebacker. They got a linebacker from there right now. Um, they're from Houston, Corey Flags from there. Is that a school that he had done well at, you know, relatively speaking, you know, obviously different level of program that they might go against at times, but just particularly that school or, or maybe other 
Houston schools that stand out to you that he did well with? Yeah, I, I can't name a specific school off the top of my head, but the I mean, if you take a look at UTSA's roster, it's just peppered with guys from the state. And one of the things that UTSA does is, you know, they'll 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 have an area recruiting coach. So I mean, he won't be specific to just de- defensive line guys. So I mean, a lot of those Houston guys were because of the connections of coach Wright. And there's also another Houston connection on, on the staff with Joe price. So they, they work hand in hand and, you know, going to these, all these schools, North shore is one of them. I mean, the, all the Cypress schools, um, you know, just the whole kind of triangle. I believe it's called the golden triangle. They're kind of East of, of Houston, almost getting into Louisiana a little bit too. So um, yeah, just a lot of experience and knowledge there in that area. One of the things that, you know, with recruiting, it's it's two things, right? It's identifying talent, and, and then also it's about going head-to-head sometimes, uh, you know, and being on the guy, you know, with the guy, you know, developing the relationship. Is there one area that he's either better at or is he strong in both? How would you kind of classify him um, in, in different kinds of recruiting areas? Sure. I, I, I mean, just the development part, I would say, is where his, his strength is at just because – you know, he's young, he's played the game, he, he knows. I mean, recruiting is so different now with the transfer portal and NILs and, you know, it's a, a commitments aren't what they used to be, to be honest with you. So you have to keep recruiting these guys and keep having that relationship. And I, I think the development of the relationship is where he's strongest at. In addition to being, you know, a well-known name, respected throughout the, you know, the area. So, It'll be a it'll be a good fit for Miami staff, and he should you know be able to deliver you know some pretty solid recruits should he uh, should the Hurricanes decide to to go to the Houston area. JJ, I appreciate your time. It's certainly very valuable. Uh, a lot of insight as Coach Wright as a coach and recruiter. This was great. I, I appreciate you for joining the show and take care, man. All right, thanks for having me.